Hi, welcome once again to this uh, seventh part of this video series, Why Acoustics? In today's session, I'm going to talk about two things. One is the reverberation time, RT60, and the test method that we adopt to do this measurement, okay? RT60, in, in the previous uh, sessions, you must have learned about the different parameters that we have used in uh, understanding the acoustics part, okay? We also saw that reverberation in a room, uh, in what way it affects, how it is different in an empty room and it's a fully furnished uh, place, how the reverberation is, it varies actually. So, how do we arrive at a parameter? So, there is an international standard for uh, doing the test method, okay, the way we have to do it and also the uh, the specified values for different application because in this room acoustics for the interior acoustics the values are different depending on the volume of the room and uh, depending on the type of environment whether it is a home theater whether it is a studio or a auditorium it's a dance floor or is a music room each one has a different uh, type of reverberation uh, time based on the enclosed space how it is being used right okay now let me tell what this reverberation time it is okay uh, reverberation time okay we mentioned that in an empty room reverberation time okay what is the reverberation time so we saw uh, in an empty room okay when two people are talking with each other right so that time it's not only the direct sound that you listen there is a lot of reflected sound that comes from the different walls right from the floor everything so the sound that you listen when your friend is talking in an empty room it is not just a direct sound lot of reflected sound with a little bit of delay is arriving in both your ears okay there is a delay in the sound that is originated and what is received there is a delay okay now this delay will cause something like an echo inside the room and it is not good actually it's not good so this room we call it as reverberant highly reverberant and in another room we evaluated a situation where this is co completely covered with, let us say, with uh, sponge or absorbent material, completely covered, the four walls, the ceiling, the thick carpet, everything. So in this case, what happens? Most of the time, when, say, your friend is talking to you, right? The reflector sound, mostly it will get absorbed, okay? There won't be any reflector sound much. It's only the direct sound. So which means there is an absence of the in uh, reflector sound so it is it is not that see full of echo with too many reflection also is not good just getting only direct sound also is not good because little bit of reflection and uh, in a room it gives liveliness inside the room right so there should be a balance between these two okay that is where we call it uh, the right reverberance okay so somewhere in between we, we need to arrive okay now in this case so this reverberation time this is going to be quite high because too much of reflection and here the reverberation will be minimum but there is an optimum value okay for each of this room there is an optimum value that is required for each of the room so that that room is useful for that particular application whether it is a studio or an auditorium and all that that's why when a room is not done in a most professional way in, with proper acoustic study uh, that room gives a lot of echo or a lot of other problems so there is not uh, so not what rt60 is just one of the measurements there are a few other measurements which we need to consider for different type of application but this is one of the key things that is uh, required to be used for uh, room acoustics okay coming to rt60 what is rt60 now we see rt is reverberation time okay 60 is nothing but 60 db okay this one is 60 db 
So what it means is, okay, keep this example in mind. Where there's a delay with a lot of microseconds, then the sound dies. Now for this test method, actually we use a pink noise. Okay, what is a pink noise? Pink noise is a particular uh, signal, a test signal, where the frequency range it covers 20 to 20 kilohertz, 20 to 20 kilohertz. And this is the international test method, uh, test frequency, or sorry, the test uh, uh, signal that is used for this type of measurement, okay, the peak noise. Now, what normally we do is, let me also parallelly explain what the test method is, okay, inside this room, okay, inside this room, okay, we, we will have a big speaker, okay and to this we will give an input signal okay which is a pink noise and here we will have a test measurement which is a test equipment which can do the measurement of rt60 okay now what happens is the pink noise is allowed to play for 10 seconds so after 10 seconds there is a silence for 10 seconds. So why? Because the 10 seconds of pink noise that is played in the room is allowed to get spread inside the room and we will see how much of time does it take to die. Okay, to die to what level? Now, for example, if I give a test signal which is giving a sound of say 90 decibel. Okay, now we need to see how much time it takes to fall by minus 60 dB. So that is what is 60. Minus 60 dB so that it comes down to 30 dB. Okay. So in that 10 seconds, this equipment will measure at different frequencies. See, remember RT60 value is not, is a frequency dependent. Okay. This one is frequency dependent. What I mean is RT60 can be found at different values at uh, say 125 hertz, 250, 500, 1 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz, 4 kilohertz for every octave. So the test measurement will actually find the frequencies, uh, will find the reverberation time for each of this frequency. And normally as a test uh, uh, parameter, some people will take the average, some people they take at 500 hertz or some people will take at 1 kilohertz. So, when nothing is specified, it is normally considered at 500 hertz, RT60. Okay, so if we have to give a plot, okay, X and Y axis, okay, and this is the time, okay. Now, for example, uh, I give a 90 dB signal, okay. It is on for 10 seconds, right. Then immediately it, it is switched off. So we see how much time does it take for that sound to come down in such a way that it will fall to 30 dB. Okay. Now this is measured in seconds. So RT60 is measured in seconds. So in this room, maybe the value will be about 0 0.05 or 0 0.1 second like that. Whereas a highly reverberant room, it may uh, go even four seconds, five seconds. If it's more bigger the room, higher the reverberation time. Because you know, uh, bigger the size of this room, accordingly, you know, the uh, time uh, taken for the signal to go get reflected in different wall, it's going to take little more time. So reverberation time in a bigger room, bigger the room, higher is the reverberation time. Okay. So RT60, to get a specified one, it is not possible to just make some uh, random uh, material uh, putting here and there and uh, trying to achieve it. You know, it's not possible. So there is a scientific method. We also use a simulation method. Okay, we have acoustic simulation software with which we can evaluate the present reverberation time. Uh, you remember in previous session, we spoke about absorption coefficient, which is for different material. There are specified values, okay, depending on the absorption coefficient of different material, the characteristics are going to change in that room. So with the acoustic simulation, we feed in all the data of what the material, if this is a 
uh, civil wall or it is a, a concrete wall or it's a drywall partition which are, or is a glass whichever the type of material we need to consider in the calculation and with the simulation we can arrive at the right reverberation time that is required okay so that is what is the reverberation time rt60 uh, the test equipment will measure this particular thing now there is one practical issue okay now in one of the previous session i mentioned that the ambient noise is normally somewhere around 40 db like that okay somewhere around 40 45 db like that so which means getting down to 30 db is practically not possible so if we are going to consider let us say okay 50 db as a uh, ambient noise level okay which means plus 60 means 110 right so you cannot blast 110 uh, db signal it will be very noisy okay so that's why this test equipment what they have done is um, they calculate at half that value that is half which is minus 30 db okay we call it as at uh, it is calculated in the test equipment there is a setting where we select three uh, t30 or sometimes t20 also okay 30 means it will measure till there is minus 30 db this thing then it extrapolates the test equipment will extrapolate for additional 30 db and it will give the value so uh, the actual measurement of the reverberation time uh, it is not going to do the exact minus 60 db so it is going to do for minus 30 db or minus 20 and it will extrapolate the value for 60 db so that is how the rt60 uh, is calculated so it's a very simple uh, concept of uh, rt60 which is very important we uh, consider this for the room acoustics and also even for soundproofing when interroom um, isolation is required we also calculate different type of uh, measurements uh, i hope you got a gist of what this reverberation time is and the test method that is adopted for doing this uh, thanks for watching if you like this video please click thumbs up and uh, do subscribe and do share with your uh, friends if you if they are also interested in acoustics thanks for watching